What's going on guys, John Elder here for Kodobi.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pull stuff out of your database and put it on a web page with Python and Django. All right guys, like I said, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pull stuff out of the database, but before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Kodobi.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we set up our database. We created our model. We pushed it into the database. In this video, I wanna show you how to pull stuff out of the database and put it on a web page. But before we do that, remember I pluralized this members class last time just to show you not to do that. It's been bugging me ever since then. So let's really quickly change this because we don't have to keep it like this. So we can just go to our models.py file, change that to member, save this file, and then head over to the admin section. We need to change it here because we have a reference to the old members. So we need to change that. Go ahead and save it. Now we can just head back over to our terminal and control C to break out of the web server. And then we could just make a new migration. So we can go Python manage.py, make migrations. And it says, uh, are you changing this from members to member? It already figured out what we're doing, so yes. And then we need to push this migration. So Python manage.py, uh, migrate. So it's a good recap of how to push, to how to make a migration and how to push it. So, okay, that seems to be working. Now we can run our server again. And let's head back over here to our members area or to our admin area. And we can see now it's called members. It still has the same data in it that we put in the last video, but uh, the class has now been changed to member. Uh, that, that was bugging me. So I just wanted to change that. Should have probably done that in the last video, but uh, last video was a little long anyway. So, okay, we've got our database. We've got a little bit of data in here, not a whole lot, but some data. How do we now pull that data out and do stuff with it? How do we put it on the screen? How do we, you know, create a web page and put that stuff up there? Well, that's what we're going to do in this video. And it's really easy. I mean, like super, super easy. So let's head over to Sublime Text. And what do we want? We want the views.py file. And this is sort of like, this is the controller, right? This is sort of the brains behind our app. And we can do stuff in our home function for our home page. If we want to create other pages, we can create other functions for those pages and we can do stuff. So here is where we need to kind of grab the data out of the database and then push it to our page. So to do that, we need to come up here and we need to import our model. So we just go from dot models, import member. And it's dot models because we did our class in our models.py file, so dot models. And let's see where we go. And it's, we wanna import member because that's the name of the class we created, right? Member. If we hadn't changed it, we would import members, right? But I just changed it to member. So we wanna import member right here. Okay, we've now imported our model. Now we need to grab the data out of it. And there's lots of different ways to grab data. We'll talk about that in upcoming videos. In this video, we just wanna grab everything, grab everything that's in the database and do something with it. So we just come to our, our view here now we want to do this on our home page, right? So remember, if we come back to our website and just go to localhost colon 8000, we have this hello world page, right? And uh, that not much to it. So let's come back over to that home page and let's get rid of this and let's just do uh, H1 and let's go uh, members database. I don't know, right? So we want to now output everything that's in our database onto this page. So how do we do that? Well, head back over to reviews.py file. And inside of here, we need to just make a call to the database and pull out all the stuff. So I'm just going to create a variable. You can name this anything, but it's uh, all the members. So I'm just going to call it all members, right? And now we just need to create an object that has all of that data, right? So uh, we would call our member class dot objects. And what do we want to pull out from the database? We want to pull out everything. So we want to pull it all out. So this will assign everything that's in our database into this variable, right? So now all we have to do is pass this variable into our home page. And we can do that right here with our context dictionary, right? If you're familiar with Django, you know how to pass data, how to pass variables, how to pass all kinds of things through your context dictionary onto your web page. Uh, that's all we're going to do here. So let's create a variable called all. 
And this is what we'll reference on the home page. And what's going to be in that? Well, it's just going to be all underscore members, which is just this variable. So essentially, we're saying, hey, pass this variable into the context dictionary, and then reference it on the page as all. So now we can come back to our home page. And we can just create a, a p tag or whatever. And we can output this onto the screen using Django, you know, embedded text here. So we just type in all. So if we save this and head back over to our page, and if we reload this, um, it's not gonna be that cool. It, we get this weird query set thing. Now this is an object, right? It's just sort of a location and memory and you check it out. It's showing member John Elder, member Mary Smith. Why is it showing us John Elder and Mary Smith, only John Elder and only Mary Smith, instead of John Elder's email address, John Elder's age, John Elder's everything. Well, if you remember back in our admin area, when we registered this, we also then came back to our models and created this thing right here, this self, which returns the, the first name and the last name. That's what this is returning. This is the object gets returned to this. And remember, we use that in the admin area, but that also works on the home page. So, you know, okay, we've got something here that's not that cool. What do we do with this? Well, we can loop through all this and pull data out however we want. So let's do that real quick. And we can do that just with a, a basic loop here. So we can use some embedded Django and we could go for, and uh, what do we want to call this? I don't know, for, for item in all, we want to print out item. And then we need to end our for loop, right? So end for. So if we save this and come back, it's going to start to look a little better. Now we just have John Elder and Mary Smith, which is again, getting put out here because in our models.view, we created this right here. If we added another thing right here, self dot email, for instance, and then hit reload, boom, it's going to put out the, uh, the email address as well. Now this is not a great way to do this. I, I don't recommend you fiddle with your models.py file so that this output looks better, right? That's not how we want to do it. I'll show you in just a second how we actually want to do it. So let's come back here, and get rid of this real quick. We actually don't want that. What we can do is reference each of these things, right? So first name, last name, email, password, and age. And we can do that right on the page itself. So instead of item, we could call item dot uh, name. Right, so if we save this and run it, we're just going to get the first names, John and Mary. So we can output this any way we want, right? So let's say we want first name. I'm just going to copy this to make it faster. So we want first name and and maybe a last name, All right? And then instead of a p tag, let's just add a, a line break. And right underneath this, we want what? Email. So item email. And then right below this, we want what? Age. So what else do we have? We have first name, last name, email age, uh, maybe we don't want to put password out on the screen. So we'll just leave this one blank. So we just won't reference password. So okay. Um, now let's say maybe we want a couple of line breaks. And maybe even a horizontal rule or something, right? So now if we save this and come back and hit reload, boom, we get john elder email john at code me.com age 41. We get a line break Mary Smith. And we can do any sort of HTML we want on this. So we could, you know, uh, we could put a strong tag here if we wanted to. We save that and come back. Now it's strong, right? Whatever you want, you could put unordered list and have these as bullet points underneath here. Whatever. I mean, we can even try that real quick just to see. Uh, see outside of here, we would put um, unordered list. And then below here, close our unordered list. And then inside of here, we would just put li for that and for that. 
instead of a line break, we would just close our LI. Same thing here. And then maybe we put a line break here just for fun. Save this, come back, hit reload. Now we're starting to get these things. So you can format this stuff any way you want. That's kind of wonky, so we'll get rid of that. But uh, I think you get the idea. Boom. Add a line break back. And another line break just for fun. And let's get rid of this one. Save it. Come back. Hit reload. And there you go. So, you know, now obviously this is just a page open to the public. Anybody could come to this page and see this information. So you would probably want to put this behind a password protected page of some sort. We'll probably look at how to do that later on. But it's just that easy to reference stuff out of the database, pull it out and put it up on the screen. So just to recap really quickly, all we do is come to our views.py file from models, import your class name, and then make a call members dot objects dot all. And uh, that's all there is to it. Now we pass this in as a context dictionary right here, right? And then we can reference it using just regular Django tags on our homepage or on any page. So very, very cool. And now anytime you have a web page, so if we have an about page or uh, if we created a members page, we would have to put the same code in that function, right? Obviously. So uh, yeah, that's really all there is to it. So in the next video, we'll start to look at how to create forms that people can fill out to join, to add their names to the membership from the website so they don't have to go to the admin area to do that. And that'll probably be in the next video. But uh, that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel. And I really, really appreciate. And check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access over 40 of my courses hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com and we'll see you in the next video.